Welcome, everybody, to Brimlord. Yesterday, we spent the whole episode making clothes for our people who look incredible, and it's going to help us a lot, but honestly, it was a little bit over-dedicated to the clothes. So today, we're going to focus on the rest of the base renovations. We're going to get the last of the bedrooms done here, or at least the last of the bedrooms that we desperately need right now. We're going to build a stockpile. I've actually got a plan for that, and also there's a couple of things. I basically compiled a list of... Things people have, have asked me to do since yesterday, which we can work on over the course of the episode. First things first, that was getting down the sandbags in front of the embrasures so that enemies couldn't use it against us. Obviously, you can't stand still on sandbags, which is why we use them in the corner of our kill box there. But I forgot to put them in front of the embrasures. I've done this every other series. I just, I just forgot to do it this time. Another thing as well, people are asking me to link up the bathrooms to the bedrooms. I've actually already done it for the unshared bedrooms so rose and helitos have their own bathrooms there and uh the other one so for example the one in here obviously i've not linked up and this one i've not linked up as well what was the prison i haven't bothered with those because oh has everyone got a bedroom now hang on um is that is that everybody because if that is everybody then hang on one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight yeah okay so sharamus can actually have a dedicated bedroom here instead so this one also can be linked up, but we need another two bedrooms, basically, which is why we're mining this area. So we'll try and get that done for today. My idea with the stockpile is very straightforward. It, we have to build on an area, because bear in mind, a lot of this is swamp. So even stuff like this, we can't build on. The rest of it is either water or rich soil. So we've got to be very careful just about everywhere we build in. Otherwise, we're missing out on some pretty good advantages, but more importantly, we just can't build there full stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy this wind turbine. I've already set a job there to deconstruct it. We're going to connect up a second wind turbine, because as we well know, we do not have nearly enough power to power this base. As, as little as what we've got right now, even that is not sufficient. Then what we're going to do is use this area that I was treating as a main entrance, which they never use as a main entrance, as a stockpile instead. It connects up to the workroom. It's in the middle of the base, so it's much easier to defend. It's just the most convenient location. More importantly, it's about the only place we can actually bloody build it. So what we're going to do is basically put down a wall here all the way across the top and then hook it up to the main base. I don't know, somewhere around here. We'll obviously have to avoid these bridges, unfortunately, but something like that. This will be where we stockpile all the stuff and then I'll get down some smelteries as well so that we can micromanage our crap a little bit more. Hey, is, seriously, are they seriously not eating it fast enough? Well, that's good news, I guess. Um... But yeah, we need to deal with a lot of the spare gear that we've got. We need to find storage for the the spare clothes, seeing as we're always going to have a couple here and there. So that's where the storage one will come in very handy. But let's actually get down a stockpile first and obviously sort out the power issues before I start focusing on putting down some shelves and storage like that. The other thing that we really want to get done today, in my opinion, is the heavy bridges and the deep water bridges. Get those done as soon as possible so that we can actually capitalize on this land that we've got. All of this area is off limits as it stands. And I don't think that's really very suitable. It's either that or we mine out the rest of the mountain and obviously run infestation risk. Essentially, want to capitalize on as much land as possible without obviously introducing the risk or wasting any soil, is what I wanted to say, but couldn't because my mouth is frozen. All right, um, so limestone is all good. That's going to remove that one. There we go. So our wind turbines can now turn on when we've obviously dealt with these trees as well. We need to get this whole area sown. Is this one blocked by anything? This one's not. See, this is the downside to it in that now we can't sow these areas, so I'm going to have to manually just have these plants removed. It might... Oh, man, I don't want to waste the rich soil, but it actually might be better to just chunk over the whole thing with, like, wood or something like that to stop these trees regrowing. Otherwise, it's going to be a constant thing we have to deal with because, again, it's rich soil after all. Right, there we go. Um, blocked by roof. Oh, shit, that better not be overhead mounted. Oh, God. That would suck. Uh, excuse me, can we get... Let's go ahead and also just do that preemptively. Um, Port, can you... Oh, thank God. All right, it's thin roof. That was quite lucky. There we go. Okay, so that's dealt with our power issues, and we've got ourselves a nice new stockpile. Might want to build a door on the outside there to deal with that. Okay, pretty good. I'm happy with that. It's going to take us quite a while to get all of the structure, the floors obviously built over this one as well. Let's do that as soon as possible. Don't need that mat there. I'm not going to go as far to deconstruct it. And what we can do is expand this area straight through the door and into this zone. Actually, I'll wait until we've uh, built the roof, finished the walls. It counts as obviously indoors and roofed over. Last thing we want is to be moving stuff in there and then they deteriorate. Like the, uh, Did we get some advanced components? I thought we got some advanced. Yeah, we do. Last thing we want is obviously leaving that in the water and having it all decompose away. So Helitos and our ground runners working on the last of the bedrooms too. This is the only other thing that really desperately needs finishing off. Um, oh, we also need to build a dedicated prison, too, now that obviously we've, we've turned this into another luxurious bedroom for our people. Getting a dedicated prison down, maybe adjacent to the hospital, maybe capitalize on this area somewhat, 
would help out quite a lot. Now, that's also quite distant from the stockpile, too, so we haven't got to run the risk of, like, basically every other series we've had this year, Prisoner's Escape, and then immediately going through and grabbing the weapons from our stockpiles. We had that problem with Elven Exiles, and we had it with a last series as well. That was a massive pain in the ass. Well, look at Pork and Upsa go. Man. Okay, our new stockpile is basically done already, then. Fantastic. All right, let's make sure that we are getting everything blocked over here. The last thing we want is accidentally introducing some uh, kind of unnecessary dirt into the colony. Hey, that's pretty good. All right, cool. So what we want to do then is get all of this stuff moved over so the people working in the workroom aren't constantly upset. I will sort out this stockpile when it's finished. When everything's hauled into there, we'll set up separate zones. We'll set up separate shelving for it as well. So separate out our clothes into something, separate our manufactured, our raw resources. Mutant arm. Whoa, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, We replaced your arm, didn't we, with the drill arm? We could also give them a mutant arm as well for their other one. No one is missing anything, are they? No one's missing anything. I'm more than happy to give you that mutant arm now. Mutant eye, mutant leg, mutant arm, drill arm. We've got ourselves a half cyborg, half mutant. That's quite cool. And of course, this person's also the one with the psychic abilities. So, psychic entry seven. Seven? Really? Um, That's a bit crap. Is it because they've only got the one psychic amplifier right now? All right. Um, right, in that case then, let's go ahead and set up an operation. We might as well capitalize on it because I assume it gives some sort of bonuses, does it? Um... Manipulation 5%. Okay, so it's the legs The legs are the only ones out of all of the mutant stuff that don't give the bonus. Very strange. Uh, so install mutant arm. Uh, left arm it is. Another perfectly good arm gone. But bear in mind, we do get to keep the other arm as well. It doesn't just completely go to waste. I'm going to go ahead and blueprint Sharamus's bedroom here because that one is probably the best one to be copying over. Um, let's, go, let's go ahead and remove that. Copy this one because it's already got the vent as well. So we can do that and get a couple of those put down. Um... We'll put one here. I, w I would prefer Delta and Upsa to have a slightly larger bedroom, but it's not a big deal, I guess. Um, we've got another layer of mountains removed there. I've accidentally done it with limestone walls. Kind of why I would have done that. Oh, look at that. There we go. Actual storage space for our stuff now. So I feel a little bit easier about uh, getting some work done. I want to I plan out this whole room a little bit better, too, because we've got it just... I mean, a dedicated research room would definitely go... Would have a lot of bonuses, particularly when we've got a lot of linkables to uh, to add on to the research branch. This is going to get way too cramped. Moving this out into probably this room would make a lot more sense as well. I'm going to go ahead and just straight deconstruct that one, get it moved. This one will try to dedicate a workroom, and I want to try and make it as effective as possible with the amount of tool cabinets that we've got to play around with here. So, if each bench is going to have two potentially connected, two potentially connected cabinets here, and just check that that is working still. Yeah, so two tool tool tailor cabinets. Good God, two tailor cabinets and a tool cabinet gives a uh, plus twenty five percent. It's worth it. But my God, we are going to probably need a bigger workroom as well. Now that I think about it, um, maybe now's a good time because obviously we want to replace all these walls with stone walls anyway. We could go like that and then get some of these heavy bridges that we've just finished down to finish that off and tr try and expand on this a little bit. Otherwise, it's just kind of wasted space. You know, we can't do anything else. We're not going to grow f crops on the on the water, and it's kind of just wasting potential room for expansion there. Sure, we'll get some more limestone bricks cut first. Obviously, bedrooms are much, much higher priority rather than expanding a workroom, which we haven't really got much to fill with right now anyway. So heavy bridges provide passage over water and even construct heavy structures on them. If that's all we need to build heavy structures on this sort of shallow water, we won't even bother going for the next research because that one will only affect the ocean, I think. So... Probably a necessary steel bridge. Um, fragile, if a building, if a bridge falls, building on top of it will fall as well. Right, got it. We only need to do that, though. It's 144. Let's see, before we continue with, with this research, if we can build on that with pork. And then we can go ahead and cancel this one and move on to something a bit more valuable for, for the early game. Defoliator ship. Ah, oh, mechanoids. Here we go. Right, okay. I was waiting for our next big raid. Finally, we see it. Okay. Armor racks. Oh, fuck off. Armor racks probably wouldn't hurt. Getting those down as soon as possible. Bearing in mind that we are going to be using, hopefully, cataract. Oh, look, we can build on it. Cool. Okay. That research is now gone. So in that case, be gone. Let's go for those armor racks as soon as possible then. If we're going to play on one of the harder, more combat-based storytellers like Hildegard, we want to min-max our workload whilst also give us access to that powerful armor because we're going to need it. So we're going to need the mechanized armor axe to be able to swap between their regular work gear and then, of course, their 
heavier duty stuff. Critical. Uh, actually, let's turn that down because we are allowing limestone chunks in our main stockpile. And then we'll go stone chunks, remove limestone chunks. Obviously, no steel slag there. And this way, it will slow enemies down a little bit further. Still, manhunt packs, whatever else it takes to allow our people time to get into position there. That'll do. Actually, for that one, we don't need to because there's a tree already there. Cool. We've also got this little um, extension on the kill box as well, so that if they do make it all the way through, we can avoid getting into a combat with them there as well. What I'd like to do, they put down a door there to allow our people quicker access to these areas. Because if I start filling this with more um, chunks, I, well, people are going to have to climb over that to even get to the slightly faster area of, of escape. Now, I've also limited the animals to this higher zone. That way they're not going to be caught in the crossfire again like they were previously when that star vampire attacked. I also want to double up on a lot of the walls too. I don't feel entirely safe just having them one by, well one by whatever they are obviously, the, the one by, block thick mainly. Getting them three or four blocks thick would almost entirely stop sappers as well so we'll focus on getting that done but again bedrooms are top priority so for the time being we'll go ahead and for forbid them. Don't let me forget to unforbid those when it becomes relevant again though. I might also crank up stone cutting. Oh, stone cutting is already priority two. And we're not harvesting this time of year. We can actually build a bunch of armchairs, can't we? Because we have a ridiculous amount of cloth stored up. Yeah, we'll do something like that. There's no way in hell six of them at the same time are going to opt to use uh, the armchairs simultaneously. But we might as well might as well build it anyway because it's, what, like 660 steel uh, steel cloth that we're going for there? Although that is quite expensive. Uh, Maybe just one row of armchairs? There's no way in hell that they're, they're all going to use that many, I think. And then finally, the other bedroom. We're almost done here. We need one more. Kibble's deteriorating away. We should really build a proper barn. I think it's the fact that they are outside and, yeah, unroofed outdoors, etc. Um, we should really build just a small little barn. Not not anything massively complex. Even, hey, even hollowing out this area wouldn't hurt for that. Having the, having the um, whatever they call the ground runners dig their own barn out. That could work fine. Let's do exactly that. Let's go ahead and just dig this sort of chunk out so that they can live in there. And then the final bedroom, that way around. Uh, so what I've done is I've very specifically made sure that we aren't opening this up to the elements quite yet. Because it will be very, very cold. So that door's down. I can remove that in a second. Oh, that wall's actually in place now, so we can remove that. Oh, wait, all of this isn't done yet, you fool. When this is built, we can take that away. Otherwise, it's going to make the base very, very cold. As you can see, it's already 5 degrees. Probably doesn't help that we haven't got half these buildings missing. All right, there we go. Um, we'll turn this into a proper little barn instead. Damn it, that's annoying. All right. Um, what are we looking at with that ship then? Uh, oh man, it's got quite a large radius. Oh, it expands seven per day. Fucking hell. All right, let's do it then. Let's go deal with that right now before we start our next big project. Everybody is decently armed, but I won't say well armed at all. I've, I've also set them up in between episodes here. I set them up dedicated defensive positions. Related to their skills. So, based on their weapon range, though doubt isn't much closer to the bottom there. We've got Sharamus up on the... Uh, up on this area. We could do with some mortars. Ooh, that wouldn't hurt. Especially given that we know how annoying the mortar clusters are. Let's get some mortars done. What that was? Trench Warfare. Does that help out with more mortars? Um... Oh, it does allow us to actually dig trenches, which uh, adds even more defense to our people. Who's got the longest range weapon, then? I want to send whoever's got the longest range weapon to go and wake up the enemies. That might be... Oh, Helotos has got a pretty long range weapon. Yeah, you know what? Helotos or Upsa. I'd rather send... Let's send Helotos and what's it? They're going to be the mechanoid wake up squad. Hold these doors open and we'll come and duck straight back through them. No, no, excuse me. I thought I said... <laughs> I thought I said hold open there. Hang on. There we go. Okay, right, good. Where did it land? Um... Right up there. You know, we should be able to hit it from the other side of this river. That gives us plenty of time to escape from these... From these, uh, Scyther. Can we hit that from there? We can just... Okay, mechanoids have woken up. Do we need to do anything else? Oh, is that it? It's just three Scyther. Oh, I'm getting way too overprepared for this then. These two guys could probably deal with it by themselves. But just to be... Just to be super safe. We are going to retreat back in and force them to come through the kill box here. Um, you guys are not moving as fast as I was hoping for there. I'll be honest with you. Right, get through, get through, get through. And then do not hold open. Please slam shut. Doors. Oh, there we go. All right, we're good. Uh, are they going to try and get us through the kill box now? Or are they just going to... Are they going to hang around? Bollocks. That wasn't really what I was expecting. Okay, send in the whole squad then. I was kind of hoping they would pursue us through the through the kill box, but apparently not. Well, right, there we go. If they get too close, we'll, we'll let Sharamus deal with them. Sharamus with his lightsaber. Right, let's get a little bit closer there. Try and find them over these rocks. Okay, good luck. 
Whenever you're ready to hit them, I'll, I'll leave it down to you guys. There we go. Is he aggroed? Still not aggroed. God fucking damn it. Um, all right, fight them over. Once again, fight them over the water. Try and keep them as slow as possible as they are heading over to us. We can at least shoot this, if nothing else. If the scythers aren't interested in a fight, we'll give them a goddamn fight. There we are. Um, still nothing, huh? They're just not bothered by the fact that we're shooting their spaceship. Oh, here they come. Right. There we go. We've woken them up now, thank God. All right, give them a shot. Sharamus, you need to stay there. Put him towards the front so they're more likely to go for him. But not close enough where it's going to cause him some issues. And the other two are coming over as well. There we go. Okay. And there's another one down. And final Scyther. Also not interested. Their, honestly, their, their aggro range is so weird these days. It feels very, very different to the way it used to be. Is this one actually coming over? What are you doing? Matt Vey, you strange boy. Um, that could be a problem. Matt Vey, Matt Vey, Matt Vey, Matt Vey. Okay, head over. Please, please don't let it kill my ground runner. Matt Vey, what are you doing? Hauling flag jacket? For fuck's sake. Wait, so even... There is... Oh, anti-mechanoid. Right, not animals. I was going to say that was... Uh, I thought I set them to, obviously, an animal dedicated zone. Please get in there. Sharamus, slice him to bits. Please don't let them kill this. Come on, come on. Take him down, take him down, take him down. Sharamus, get in there. Get in there. Nine hours. Come on. Kill him dead. There we go. Okay. Well, that's annoying. Um, damn animals in this game, honestly. They drive me mad. Right, let's go smash this thing then. Get it done. Get some advanced components, whatever else. And boom. You know, that's not too bad. We've got a decent amount of steel there. We've got plastic. We've already got enough to build a monster analyzer anyway, but that's uh, that's all right. It's not too bad. Group of dromedaries have joined us. Well, I suppose if we ever plan on doing any more caravanning, that might help out somewhat. Let's go ahead and get the... Get the barn heated as well. I don't think the animals are too bothered by it, but we might as well uh, might as well make sure they've got the most comfortable life here. They've gone from roaming around in the middle of firefights to having their own little dedicated barn. They've got plenty of food as well. We've, we've accidentally made... How the hell have we ended up making 300 and... What? <laughs> um, unpause at 95 is obviously an issue. We'll unpause that when it gets to like 50. Um, huh. Somehow we've made 400 out of 100 kibble. I don't know how they manage that. Ah, nice. Mechanized armor racks are finished. So we want to put that somewhere that's convenient to the kill box, but not somewhere where obviously they're going to degrade. Now, in the dinosaur series, we built kind of a little outdoor shed to capitalize on that. We might want to do the same thing, like, like a room that's got a lot of openings so you can get in there, in and out, equip their armor and be gone. We'll do that again, I think. Um, probably couldn't hurt. Let's focus on finish off the last of the workroom, the last of the bedroom here as well. But we are basically done with this. Let's make sure that this is all nicely done as well. I missed out on a couple of floors. Need a bit extra wood, I think, to finish that one off. But everybody's now got their own dedicated bedrooms, thank God. Five colonists idle. What the hell? How have we done this? 438 out of 400. I mean, it's only a good thing. And um, we still can't plant because the... Because it's the wrong season to do so. So they haven't really got much to do at this point. Uh, this is where we might want to drop them all some points in fishing. Just have them do that if there really is nothing else to do here. Let's make sure that's set to small. Um, always catch small fish. And what about this one? Oh, well, that's not a fishing zone. Might as well set them to do that. Because they've really got fuck all else to do here. Um, yikes. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to do. Uh, we should probably get out another door if we are going to let them do that. Kind of let them go in and out of this area a little bit more. Maybe chop in some more wood. Maybe always having... We need to use the manager mod a bit more effectively, but that would also involve having a dedicated manager. So always making sure we've got X amount of hunted animals. Always making sure we've got X amount of wood in the colony wouldn't hurt. I'll probably start looking into that so that the game can manage some of these other annoying things for us now that we've got very little to do. I suppose we might as well build a smeltery. Uh, it's, it's a better time than ever to, to get one of those done as soon as possible to... Kind of get rid of even just smelting steel slag, but more importantly, getting a tiny little bit of extra resource out of some of this stuff wouldn't hurt either. We can build those in the workroom because they're not affected by benches, are they? They're unskilled. So having that next to a tool cabinet, for example, I believe doesn't actually affect anything. I might be wrong on that. Um, we could have the uh, the smelteries and the refineries. Actually, getting refineries early on would be pretty good as well. So we can get rid of some of this boomalo juice, whatever the hell it's called. Um... Getting those down in here as soon as possible just to help deal with the mess would would, would be kind of useful. All right, let's get a couple of those down then. Uh, don't want to go too ham on that one. And then I think the next thing to do now is storage. So fabric hampers, a couple of those definitely couldn't hurt. Let's go for, uh, so what do these do? They, they just store meals and treats, got it. Um, 
Haulers carry material here for storage. Okay, got it. We've got a clothing rack. Those will help out quite a lot. So we've got our cloth and our clothes dealt with. Um, food hazmat container is a bit pointless. Medicine cabinet, also a bit pointless. Um, holds more than a pallet, but not as neatly. I think that means it takes them longer to get stuff off of it. What we'll do then is just put down a couple of each. See what... I, I assume they've got default settings that they can hold. Ah, shit. Oh, my God. Sharamus, Pork, Helatos, and Smooth Octopus got hit by the plague. Wow. Forget the mortars then. We will come back to that later on. Let's go hospital. So we need hospital beds, uh, surgical lamp, vitals, monitors. All of those would be fantastic. Get that done. Surgical lamp, surgical instrument, vitals monitor, obviously when it's available. Multi-analyzers. Oh, we need vitals monitor to perform multi-analyzers, do we? Uh, is that a prerequisite? It is. Wow, that sucks. Okay, get those two queued up as well then. Oh, we need multi-analyzers before we can even get surgical lamps. Bollocks. Um... Sure. I mean, let's do it then. Cue it all up. Hospital beds first. That's got to happen. We also have to build an extra hospital bed now because another or another bed for medical because someone else is ill. Let's do that. And then let's also get down another end table there to help them. Help the, help the room be as lit up as possible, but also obviously help out with comfort. Well, there's your hospital right there. Um, oh, another thing as well on my list of many, many things to do here was to put down... Uh, somebody pointed this out that the fridges use such a small amount of power. It couldn't hurt to have one down here just to store the... Uh, just to store the extra medicine that we've got going on for us. So let's go ahead and put down in temperature, I think. Yeah, there we are. Single refrigerator. Um... I think we want it in the middle of the room to make it as convenient as possible. So you are looking at an 80% tank quality on Helatos is fantastic. You got a 54% quality. Uh, Smooth Octopus, how are you looking? 51%. Uh, oh, yikes. And um, we've got power outages again. Fuck. Um, these are all online, aren't they? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Just a case of, once again, not having enough power for the small base that we've got. I mean, I can't afford to turn that off, but we will turn off the Taylor bench. We'll turn off the machining table. Uh, or at least I would if I could fucking see what was going on there. Do these, do these don't need power, do they? Right, get that turned off as well. Um, how are we doing for heat? It's still way too cold in the base. Turn off the flat screen television. That's 330 watts to save us there. This, the overall cooler... We'll have to reinstall elsewhere, so we might as well just straight up decommission that one. I'm sure the animals will be fine if we turn off power there, too. Ah, oh, it's these bloody wind turbines. They're no good. Actually, hang on. It's probably because the batteries aren't hooked up. Actually, why are we out of power? Uh, solar flare? No? Because then the batteries actually aren't hooked up. Ah, that would explain a lot. Thank you, Pork. Very cool. Um, <laughs> fuck me. Come on. Upsert, let's go deal with that. Upsert, you know when I said force that i mean actually finish the friggin thing try that power back on there we are you absolute fool my god um gather and stand so chunk no no, no. I, I would rather you uh rather you finish this job now that pork's out of action for a while there we go okay no we've still got no power oh because he hasn't put the other cables oh uh, god fucking damn it pork let there be light. There we are. It's a little bit better. Uh, I probably didn't need to cut the power off to some of the things but we'll keep it off just an emergency emergency for the time being 13% immunity, 17% spread. 17% immunity, 17% spread. We're looking at 13% immunity, 15% spread. And 17% immunity, 17% spread. Not great. We are either matching it or being outpaced by it. I'm relying on Rose here to be head doctor. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so Rose is not going to be one of the ones out there. I'm hauling chunks into position to, to block up the kill box. Uh, that's what this supposedly super important job is. It's getting our people killed. I'll just make sure she's in the zone, ready to tend to these people. It might also be good to turn her into, like, a doctor in residence. Build her a little bedroom next to this so that she can be up at any time to uh, get ready to tend them. There we are. Okay. Um, next thing to do, as I recall, there was a trade ship that flew by. Yeah, a scrap trader. Just see if they've got any medicine. I imagine they'll have... Yeah, they've got nothing. Oh, scrap trader are the ones you sell to. You don't buy from. They'll, they'll buy absolutely anything, though, to make up for it. Um... I was going to say, why are they buying so little? Then it occurred to me we haven't actually restored our trade beacons into the main uh, into the main stockpile zone. We will need to either way. Bollocks, that's a shame. All right, put one there. And then build another one. I guess up here somewhere we'll do. There we are. Okay, that's annoying. Um, not that it really matters too much. Although selling some of this stuff off would really help out with some of our space. Let's see how quickly our guy can build this orbital trade beacon. See if we can get it built and get back on the thing with you try and see if we can trade some crap off here there we go okay um get rid of the bird skin we'll keep the light leather the plain leather because obviously a lot of things drop there don't need the camel hide of the insect chitin um 
Fox fur, I feel like, is irrelevant. How, how frequently are we going to be fighting foxes? They're not worth it for the meat. Let's get rid of the sentient plant skin. The panther fur might be worth keeping because we... I mean, panthers are a very common manhunter enemy. We'll get rid of it just in case. Um, Chthonian kite in there. There was 132. That's cool. We'll hang on to that. Um, deep one meat and star vampire meat we can't use unless we want our people to go mad. So we might as well get some money out of it. Um, and then we'll sell them all of this crap that we basically are just hoarding to take up space. Because half of this stuff can only be smelted down into anything. We'll keep the tools. Um, those probably couldn't hurt too much. It's really it. I'll send the short bows. All these things would just be smelted down anyway or, or burnt specifically. There we go. That's emptied it out quite nicely. And how much gold did we get from that? Uh, 2,000. Wow. All I did was sell off all the bunch of extra overalls that we had left over. Um, from where I obviously wasn't counting in the stockpile at that stage when we were crafting all. Cool. So I specifically also kept some extra clothes because I noticed that... Some of it will, uh, some of it was enchanted where they might not be wearing it regularly. Obviously, when you set up the apparel, there's no way to say only wear infused gear. So, or more specifically, we can't really set it up. You, you can set up infused gear, but we, sh we can't, in theory, set up infused gear because there's not enough infused gear to go around right now. I'd have to basically force everyone's outfits anyway, so there's not much point. So, everybody besides Pork is doing fine. They are either ahead of the disease or on par with the disease. Pork, though, is 27-23, but bear in mind, Pork spent a little bit longer to build himself this medical bed. So, hopefully, over time, the uh, immunity will catch up, and it is, if you look there, uh, just, just looking at him right now, it's caught up a couple of percent. So, he should be fine. I've got to make sure that Rose is ready and able to tend to these the second it becomes possible. So you've got two hours on you. Oh, is it two hours on everybody? Hopefully we can get more to line up like that. Uh, one hour on you, and then Sharon is probably also one hour then. Yeah, okay. So let's get Rose back into here, ready to... I've just got him in Maxis now. This is, this is my only job, is make sure these people survive. Is that really the most appropriate? I know they switched to the best tool for the job, but I feel like uh, a heavy machine gun when you're trying to save people's lives is the opposite of that. All right. Four, three... Two, one, and send. Okay, right. So let's get you tend to Sharimus. And then obviously straight on to Halitos after that. Should start doing it automatically or not because they don't quite line up. That's a bit annoying. Um, right, let's hold you here. Uh, can tend now. Right, okay, there we go. Prioritize tending. We're looking for some big tens on this one. So this one was 73%. That's fantastic. You're good. 33%, 39 immunity. I'd have to actively not tend them now for them to die. 29%, 29. Like I said, they're either equal or ahead quite significantly. Um, Smooth Octopus, 34, 39. Can tend now. Let's get to you. I really should go for port first if he's available to. Uh, yeah, he is. Rose, please tend. Thank you. Come on. We need a high pork. Oh, 91%. That's what we need. It's only 5% ahead right now, but it's 4% ahead. He should be fine. That was that was big. I'm actually going to keep up so I to go and get all this stuff finished off. So I assume it... Oh, it's not the fact that it has a default setup. It's the fact that it can only take certain things. That's a lot cooler. That saves our saves ourselves a lot of time. Right, let's go down to preferred. And then have them hopefully haul all this stuff onto the shelves then. Take hay. Um, any sort of... Oh, yeah, that's quite cool as well. So any sort of material there. We've got our two smelteries down too. So I'll set a permanent smelt metal from Slag Bill. These will have to do as we get more and more things. I'll have to decide as the tech progresses. Like, what do we want to smelt down right now? In terms of weapons, probably nothing. Because we're still at the lowest tier as far as I'm I'm concerned. Bear in mind, we are using flintlock pistols there. Oh, God, how many of these fucking hiccups? Um, right, okay. Let's go ahead and paste that one over onto this one too, just to be sure. There we go. Um... Yeah, fine. So now we've just got to get all of this stuff hauled into a bit more of a more of a convenient layout. And with this new storage, we should just be able to go like that. Look at all that. That's all the space we can save now. That's fantastic. And then to really min-max supreme, I'm going to say drop this one down to preferred. We're going to shrink the zone. And then we're going to build... I've done this in a couple of previous series, but just to really save on as much time as we possibly can here. Get down another spot. Let's go ahead and copy that over. Paste the settings into there. And then increase the priority on this one so that it's much, much higher. That way, they'll ram as much food as close to the doors as possible rather than have it all spread out like this. And in fact, we might even want to go real min maxi with it. Get it really, really close to the doors there. There we go. Probably also go as far to say no mutant body parts near the kitchen door. Not very good for meals. Um, also, no corpses. No animal corpses. Again, not, not hyper practical there. Besides that, though, a fish we can cook directly into meals, can't we? Um, things like jelly, probably a bit of a waste of time having them so close to the door. Basically, I'll just try and min-max this as we go through and make sure that this area is 
um, you know, high priority food. Let's take a look at our patience and see how we're looking. 61 percent means you 48, so you are more than okay. 45, 44, you've actually taken over the plague at this stage. 62, 52, and then finally 46, 46, everybody is okay. That last 10 session was exactly what we needed there to bring them all to maximum health. I think everybody's going to be fine. There we are. That should save up to a lot of time and effort. So now he doesn't have to come through these doors, walk all the way to the other side of the freezer, run back, walk all the way to the other side, run back. Just makes things a little bit more convenient. We might even want to go as far to do a second layer of that as well with a, with a different priority again. So the other one we've set to critical, this one will set to preferred. And then if we copy the settings over, we're keeping the stuff that needs freezing, but isn't hyper essential insects meet the Chthonian meat, the limbs down this end of the freezer where they aren't, you know, so so relevant to cooking and meals there. This is this is min-maxing kind of unnecessarily, I will admit. Oh, so you can only have one type of item per shelf. Oh, really? But you can store much more things on a shelf than you can on the floor. I see. So we can have 1,888 on these shelves. Oh, that's not massively convenient then, is it? I'll be honest, I assumed it worked differently to that. I assumed it was like the other storage mod that we used. Um, it's not, I will admit, it's not like the end of the world here, but it's not as convenient as I expected by far. Like, being able to store what is, like, six flat jackets all on one thing as well will help out quite a lot. Spare armors, uh, spare overalls, whatever you want to look at, those will all come in very handy or stacking them up here as well. We might want to build another one of this as well for things like components, advanced components. See how that works. And there's our hospital heads, right. So the question is, do we have the resources now to be able to capitalize on that? Probably not. 48 components and 460 steel. Ooh, maybe not. Uh, in fact, hang on. We've got 20, well, what, like 20 steel too short there? That's a shame. We can build it directly under them too and avoid any, m missing any time with treatment. I did notice there was some steel on the other side of this though. The last thing we want to do is mine out too much of an area that our coolers can no longer sufficiently freeze the entire thing. So what I'm thinking is, let's put a door there. <laughs> it seems massively wasteful, but it, it's also the best strategy to... I mean, it's, oh, it's still five degrees in there. Shit, okay. Right, we definitely need a couple more coolers on that one. Oh, we don't have enough steel for it. Well, not quite yet. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Wait, where, what are you doing? Oh, it develops immunity. Oh, wait, they're already, they're already cured. Oh, shit. Okay, fair enough. 76% um, immunity, 77. Oh, shit. Somehow, Stevenson has lost... Uh, sorry, Helitos has lost immunity there but i guess bad treatment recently and then luckily pork is absolutely fine 69 77 immunity i don't know how we've lost tending on helisos though that's a bit of a shame up so let's come work on this hospital bed just for the slightly better medical treatment we're looking at master is that master what hospital bed oh no way that's always going to be so useful nice work okay let's see if that helps a little bit more then shall we um god damn that's so annoying it's extreme plague now. 8180. There's still not much in it, but next treatment, if we even get a next treatment opportunity, has to be good. Yeah, two hours. Get Rose. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move Rose down here sort of preemptively in a second. All right, join us, Rose. Let's see if we can save a life here, my friend, because it is not looking good otherwise. Um, yeah, give a drink to Halatos as well. Here you go, my friend. Right, okay. Zero seconds. Done. Right. Tend right now. Couldn't have got that any more perfect. She was walk walked over there just as tending became available. Come on, live. We need like a, uh, to be honest, we don't need much. We don't need much. Even a 70% a tank quality would be ideal. Bear in mind, he's got a 45% tank quality and the infection is getting ahead. The plague is getting ahead. So we need like a, I, I need a 70 minimum here, Rose. 83. I'll fucking take it. That'll do it. That might actually do it. 86, 85. God damn, I hope this works. All right, here it comes. Medical emergency. 91, 91. The immunity has just pulled ahead. Did you see that? 92, 92. Immunity should go ahead very briefly. Wow, we really pulled it out of the bag there towards the end. That was almost a death. That was the closest I think we've got to losing anybody in this colony so far. 95, 94. Should be good. We shouldn't have to watch this, but I'm going to anyway, just to be 100% sure. Shit, that was close. It's going to be like 97% immunity. Oh, sorry, 97% plague spread by the time he finally becomes immune here. 96, 98, yeah. That last treatment really did change the, change the game. Well, that was pretty close. Uh, only 3%. Actually, it's going to be closer to 2%. Yep. 2% off of dying. That's a hell of a turnaround.
Luckily, we've got a hospital bed, so we can now work on our vitals monitors. The multi-analyzer is being worked on as well, which realistically I should have done a long time ago. We need to work on a dedicated um, dedicated research room next then. And look at this deal we've got. Oh, my God. 399 again. Very cool. Bulgrids Trader are uh, just about to head over. They should use the extra little door we've got in our kill box there to get through. Roof collapse. What? Oh, from where he took, took apart the shit shed. I thought, seeing as we're a bit past that now, we could probably afford to take that apart. Um... Is that the new Gigantelopes? Gigantelopes, yeah, they look different now. Cool. Um, Delta, let's get you trading with that goat right there. See what they've got for us. We should be wearing that. Um, oh, she's already wearing the hat, isn't she? That gives her the uh, better social bonuses. What's it in Sheremus? Why aren't you fishing? I did set fishing to be their lowest priority. God, that's why they're not actually fishing then. Oh, is it only one person per zone? Oh, well, that's garbage. Um, how, how big do we need the zones to be? Does that still count? Too small. It needs to be at least 25 blocks. Bollocks. Uh, what about that? Uh, well, let's see what they've got to start off with. We could buy Goat a friend. I'm going to buy Goat a friend. Let's do it. Um, Dromedries. We'll keep those because those could be handy eventually. Uh, man. What have you guys got that I want? Probably not a huge amount. I'll be honest with you. Synthread, not too bad. Um, herbal medicine. Probably couldn't have to buy a few extra. I'm going to do that. Sugar beets, plums, syrup, dried meat, agave, nectar. Buy some drones. People people told me they wanted me to mess around with the bees. Let's do it. Let's buy one of each. See see what the hell... Oh, you have to put them into beehives, though, don't you? Otherwise, they die instantly. So, you know what? We won't bother with that for the time being. We'll wait until I've built some stuff. But I will work on bees very soon, I promise you. Um, besides that, though, they haven't really got anything that takes my fancy here. We've got the gold that we need. Um, we don't really want all this flat crap. Actually, we might. We might want to use the armor axe and have flak on those. Alatos is no longer incapable of working. We have everybody back up on their feet. Very nice. Ground runners are doing all of the mining for us there too, which has worked out pretty decently. Want to get everybody re-equipped. And then what I'm trying to do here is see if we can min-max having two fishing zones. Just as a nice little backup job there to also... Yeah, there we go. Cool. So we've got a small fishing zone there. Those those are just both around the perfect size for a little extra fishing. We could put another one there. Um, but that's a bit far from the base at that stage. So got a couple of backup jobs. Even that's still not enough because, of course, Sharamus has nothing to do there. We'll bring in a bit of extra bit of extra food, though. And once again, we are entirely out of power. Absolutely phenomenal. Still being blocked by some of these trees here. So I, I think tomorrow we'll work on... Obviously, a much bigger work zone. We'll work on uh, the clothing defenses with the mechanized armor axe. We will work on... Basically, finishing what we started today. Multi-analyzer. Tidying this place up, because this is a complete mess. Better power. Better power is really the main thing. Thank you all for watching. Slightly longer episode than I intended on going for there, but the uh, kind of a nail-biting almost death there at the end that I thought was worth keeping in. Thank you to Noblesse, Crow Skull, James Shea, Aromatic Fool, Shea, Scott, Tyler Kendall, Justin Wallace, Nostrus, Tom Terra 18, Facunda Vasquez, Rodin, Ben Hoffland, Caden Carter, Vacuous Backus, and everyone else at the insane tier lovers on patreon thank you guys for allowing the channel to exist on youtube in 2019 especially during current events much appreciate big thank you to these guys for allowing this all to exist in the first place and a thank you as well goes out to under the couch wesley c shardul asaro fat joe isato shittleder empty machine wilson as hef cogsell nick Russian oligarch billionaire. Hey, I'm Alex, Mr. Awesome, Wild Bill, and everyone else at Patreon as well. Thank you guys for allowing the channel to exist.